Good evening, ladies. It is me again. Yes, you're stuck with me on another Wednesday night. It is time for Winter Circle Bible Study. Listen, girl, it's time. It's about to go down. We are in it to win it in the month of June. We are ready to jump, okay? We are feeling froggy this month, and it's no better way to express this foggy feeling we have than to jump into the Word of God and to let Him prepare us um, as He pushes us out into the unknown, pushes us into a place called better. So let's go. Let's go because I, I want to be prepared for the push. You know, God, don't don't push me out there before you prepare me. I, I want to take time um, throughout my day, throughout the week, to be prepared for the push. And so that is where we are, sisters, in the month of June. We are being prepared for the push. So every Wednesday when I'm on here, I want you to jump on. I want you to holler at your sister girls and tell them, listen, Winter Circle is on. Let's jump in. Um, you know what Mama Monroe says, get your paper Bible, baby. I don't care if it's the big one that's on the coffee table. Uh, with dust on it, do, uh, dust that joker off and, and bring it with you in here in front of your laptop or in front of your computer, um, in front of your iPad or even your phone and let's get into the word of God. Now, if you were with me last week, you know that we were talking about um, that preparation part of the, the push. You know, God preparing us before we take the leap. Um, he processing us, the process that uh, we go through as women that love God and want to please God, the process that we go to, through before we take the leap, um, before God enlarges our territory and how valuable uh, that process is. We talked about that through the lens of Elisha and the company of the prophets. Let me tell you, there were some bad boys, okay? <laughs> there were some bad boys in 2 Kings um, because they not only saw the vision to enlarge their territory, but they saw the need for the work uh, to enlarge. They saw the need to, to cut down the trees, uh, to see the space uh, become a part of their uh, visual uh, manifestation, to see that space uh, come to life and to prepare that space themselves uh, for them to move forward. And so that's what we're doing. We're preparing the space, sisters. We're preparing that space to move forward. It all started with the realization uh, of the prophets that the place where they were was too small for them. And now if you weren't there last week, come on this week, I'll help you to catch up. Just look at 2 Kings 6, uh, 2 Kings 6, verse number 2. And uh, verse number 1, actually 1 and 2, where they said to Elijah very plainly and clearly, the place where we are is too small for us. You know, we're meeting here, but uh, it's too small. We need to, uh, we need to find a bigger place to dwell. Woo, good God Almighty. We need to find a bigger place to do what God has asked us to do. And I believe that they realized that the vision was big. The vision was big. The vision, even before um, it came into full fruition, that, that they prepared in advance because they knew that where they are wasn't the final destination, that that wasn't the end, that they, they were bound for bigger. Good God Almighty. That, that, they were bound um, to, to walk into bigger spaces and bigger places, um, and not just in dimensions. Let me, let me say that before we jump all the way in. Let me say that, not just in dimension, um, but bigger places as in mentality. Um, when we think about God advancing us and enlarging our territory, I think that we begin to think maybe I need to move. I need to move um, to another job. I need to move to another department. I need to move to another state, to another city. I need, I need to move. This, this, this location is too small. But sometimes it's not about the dimensions or the altitude, the, the longitude, the latitude. It's not about that. It's about mentality. 
It's about mentality. God wanting us to see um, that that the mentality of those around you is too small. Ooh, the way they think, the way they see life, the way they do life, the way they um, the way they uh, the way they go about their day, the way they the 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 passion at which they seek God, the, their mentality is too small. And so when we say that God is jumping and we're we're jumping into a new place maybe just maybe you're not leaving the place where you are maybe you're leaving the people Ooh, good God Almighty! Here I go with the noises. Here I go with the noises, girl. Cause listen, it's it's not always location. Sometimes it's God showing you um, that the way I the way I designed you, the way I created you, this ain't how you should be acting. This ain't how you should be thinking. This ain't how you should be doing church and doing me, doing God, doing your relationship with me. I want you to think bigger. I want you to think bigger, sis. Think bigger. Why don't you say that to your sister in the chat? Let's 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 wake up early. Let's wake up early. Um, just just throw it in the chat somewhere if you're in the cathedral tonight. If you're um, in Facebook church tonight, I want you to put it in the in the chat. Tell your sis, sis, think bigger. Think bigger. You gotta go bigger, baby. You gotta go bigger. Um, go think beyond your potential. Think beyond your potential. And some of us. Um, as women, we stop at that place of potential. And I talk to women all of the time who say, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about doing this and, I, you know, I'm, I'm going to do this and, I, you know, and I want to do that. And, you know, this is in my journal and that's in my journal. And, you know, I'm fitting to do this. You know how we say that in the South. Massachusetts sisters, New York sisters, y'all don't know about that. But in the South, we say we fitting to do something, okay? That means, you know, I, I had started yet, but but I'm getting ready to do it. We're Today, we are going to think beyond the potential. We are going to think beyond the getting ready to, um, into uh, the actual process. Potential is not enough. You've got to start the process. you got to start somewhere. And that is what we're learning from the company of the prophets. They realize that in order to move from potential um, to the promise, um, in order to see the prophecy come to pass, they had to start somewhere. They had to begin the process somewhere. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to begin the process because potential ain't enough, sis. Potential ain't enough. We got to move to process. So here's, here's these P's. You remember we were talking about the P's, you know? The P's um, that are necessary when God is processing us. Um, the P's that show that this process is working. Um, process, when God processes us, the first P that we mentioned last week, it's always perceivable. Someone always notices. It's noticeable the change that is happening in your life. It's noticeable what God is doing. It's noticeable that you're growing. Process is always perceivable. When God puts his hand on you, it's something different about you every time. Every time in your walk with God, when he touches you, um, there's always a noticeable and perceivable difference that takes place in your life. Um, and you know, you 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 know how we say, you know, you know, God's working in me, he's doing something in me, you know. This is 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 private. No, baby, it ain't private. What he's doing in you is perceivable. We should always be able to see that, you know what, God has touched him. He, uh, she has, he has touched that woman. He has touched that daughter. He has touched her, and there's something different about her. It's always um, perceivable. Now, here's the second P that I was trying to get to last week, but, you know, our team, just our wonderful, wonderful production team in the sister circle, uh, cut me clean yet last week, okay? But the second P, so it's always um, perceivable, but the next P is it's always precise. True process is precise. Now, let me give you the definition of precise. Now, I know you know it, but you know, sometimes something opens up to you when, when you get that definition. Um, precise. Precise means refined in measurement, calculation, or specification. Um, something that is exact, it's error-free, it's correct, it's meticulous. Oh, 
true, true process is precise. Now hear me and hear me clearly, sisters. I want you to know that the process that God is taking you through is precise. That God is taking you through the exact process at the exact place in your life, at the exact time in your life that is necessary for you to be able to take the leap on time. Woohoo! Yes, yes, yes. I'm talking to you because you think that you're out of season. You think that you're out of time. You think that what you're going through is suffering. You think that what you're going through is backlash from heaven um, because of mistakes that you made, um, uh, of, of times where you fail and, you know, and disobeyed God. No, baby, this is process. This is process. God said, I'm refining you. <laughs> I'm refining you. Um, I am. I'm taking uh, some 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 more specific measurements of you. I am. I am calculating what is necessary to put on the inside of you in order for you to be able to take the leap. Doesn't it make you uh, uh, excited? Doesn't it comfort you a little bit to know that before you take the leap, that heaven is precisely measuring what is needed to put on the inside of you in order for you to be successful in the jump. Yeah, that's what they're doing. That's what's happening. That's why some people are being subtracted from your life. That's why certain people are being added to your life. That's why um, your prayer time is changing. That's why your prayer language is changing. That's why your praise is intensifying. Um, that's why uh, your desire for the word of God is getting even the more, um, is, is more depth coming to it. Because heaven is, is calculating what you need to take this leap. Good God Almighty. Yeah. Heaven is preparing with supernatural accuracy uh, to help you take the leap. God is putting in you exactly what is needed for you to do this. Exactly what you need to do this is placed on the inside of you. And here, here should be, this is what, what our prayer should be as God is taking us through this precise process. Our prayer should be, Lord, don't let me be in the way of the work you're doing. God, don't let me be in the way of this process. Don't let me be in the way of this precise process that you're taking me through. But let me be the vehicle you use to allow people to see your work. Don't let me be in the way, but let me be the vehicle that you use for people to see your work. So when you have submitted to the process, um, when you have submitted uh, to, to the work that God needs to do in you in order to prepare you for the jump, you give them a yes. You give them a yes, God, yes to the process. Yes um, to, to all of the specifics that are necessary to be changed on the inside of me in order for me to take the leap. And I, when I was thinking about um, everything needed uh, to do this work is already on the inside of you, it took me to Jeremiah, uh, took me to Jeremiah. So let's go to Jeremiah real quick. Okay, so Jeremiah 1, um, I think I want to start at verse number 4 and like go on down a little bit, do some Bible traveling, okay? So Jeremiah 1, now this is the ESV version because I really like the way that they word it. Um, but this, this scripture, it, it gives us like an inside peek to the call of Jeremiah. When, when God called Jeremiah, when Jeremiah prepares to take the leap, here is, um, the, 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 here is the pep talk. Here is the pep talk that God gives to Jeremiah to prepare him to take the leap, okay? So let's look at it to, together. Jeremiah 1 verse 4. It says, now the word of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, 
Oh, Lord, my God, behold, I don't know how to speak for I'm only a youth. But the Lord said to me, don't say that. Don't say I'm only a youth. Do not say I am only a youth for to all to whom I send to you, you shall go. And whatever I command you, you shall speak. Now, listen to this, sisters, um, because basically what God is telling Jeremiah is before I gave you life, I gave you a call. Good God from Zion. Before I put breath in you, before I took the time to form you precisely in your mother's womb, I took the time to form and precisely measure and create the call. Oh, before I created you, I created the call. Good God Almighty. And I'm talking to somebody today who doubts your call. You doubt that you are called to something. You doubt that you are called to do great things you doubt that you are called to lead you doubt that you are called um, to 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 jump to leap into uh, bigger and better things you doubt your call how can you doubt your call when before God created you he created your call Wow we Wow we before I formed you in your mother's womb I knew you. I already knew you could do it. I already knew you were well able. I already knew you had what it takes. I already knew you had the words in your mouth. I already knew um, you were designed to do this. Before I formed you in your mama's womb, I knew you. He didn't say mama, but... <laughs> I just said it though. Uh, before I formed you in the womb of your mother, I knew you. I consecrated you. Um, I separated you. I called you to myself. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. I appointed you. I appointed you before you were even born. Hear me and hear me clearly, sisters. Some of us have waited years on years on top of years for man to appoint us to do a certain thing. We have waited for man to appoint us. We have made, waited for man to validate us. We have waited uh, for man's words to confirm that we are called to do a certain thing, um, that we are um, uh, able, well able to do a certain thing. But here's what God is saying to you. What are you waiting on that for? Because I already uh, appointed you even before you were born. I appointed you to do this. And as soon as he tells Jeremiah um, that he is he is well able to take this leap into ministry, as soon as he tells Jeremiah that, Jeremiah comes back with why he can't. Oh, my God. Hear me and hear me clearly, sis. Um, a part of going through the process is um, to stop. Uh, a part of going through that process um, is to stop protesting what God has called you to do. You are literally, you got your sign up and you are protesting what God has asked for you to do. You got your sign up and, and all of our signs say something different. I'm not good at talking. I don't have enough education. I, I was divorced. Um, um, you know, I, I've been in jail. I've done this. I don't care what you've done. I don't care how long you did it and how good you were at it, baby. You are still called to greatness. You are called to greatness. And here is Jeremiah with his protest sign saying, I'm too young. I'm too young and I can't speak. The very thing that God is telling him that he can do, he's fighting back and telling the creator that he can't do it. How does the creation tell the creator what it can can't do. Good God. I I need an amen. amen. Somebody can tell me what I can hear. I feel like I'm talking good. Because how dare the creation tell the creator what it cannot do? How dare you talk to God and tell him what you are not able to do? How dare you look at God and tell him you can't go back to school? How dare you, sis? How dare you look at God and tell him that you are not well able to start this business, that you are not well able to do ministry in the marketplace, that you are not well able to raise 
these children into greatness. You are well able. He created you. The creator created you um, in, in the full ability of your call. Golly, golly, golly. He created you in the full ability of your call. And here's what he said to him. Uh, verse number six. Now, we're going to get back to Elijah and the crew over there. But I, let, let, let's deal with this, okay, before we get back to Elijah. Let's deal with this in Jeremiah. Um, he said, don't say that I'm only a youth. Verse number seven. Do not say I am only a youth. For to all to whom I send you, you shall go. And whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do you hear how precise the call is? He's telling him where he will go. He's telling him what he will say. Um, he's giving him the specifics of the call. And so the, uh, the specifics of the process process God is giving you. He's telling you, here's where I want you to go. Here's what I want you to do. Um, and then this, this is the pep talk right here. Here's, here's God in the corner uh, of the boxing ring, giving him the pep talk. He says, and here, this real clearly, Jeremiah, verse number eight, don't be afraid of them. You know, I'm going to look at all cameras because I'm just not sure which camera y'all looking at. I just want to make sure y'all hear me and hear me clearly that God is removing doubt from this next season of yours. God is removing fear from this next season of yours. He's We're divorcing doubt. We're divorcing fear. Do not be afraid of them. And who is them? What they used to say, them? is uh, Thelma, Henry, Evelyn, and Mary, or something like that. <laughs> Don't be afraid of them. Don't be afraid of their words. Don't be afraid of their opinions of you. Don't be afraid of them. Um, here's, what, here's, here's, here's the kicker. He said, because I'm with you to deliver you. I'm with you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord, verse number nine, then he put his hand and he touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, behold, I have put my words in your mouth. And hear me and hear me clearly, sisters. Whenever, whenever you feel like you're not prepared to take the jump, whenever you feel like you're not, uh, you're not prepared to take the leap, that's a moment where God is pushing you to get in his word. He's not pushing you to quit. He's pushing you to get in his word. Whenever you feel like you're not prepared to do something, that's a clarion call to you to jump into the word of God. Why? Because when God puts his words in your mouth, um, he's preparing you. And if you feel unprepared, that's because it ain't enough word in there, baby. It ain't enough word in there. And I'm talking to myself. I'm getting on myself too. Uh, because when we feel, you know, when I feel I can't do this, that this is too big for me. Um, there's, there's got to be some word in there to combat what the enemy is saying to you and what you're saying to yourself. And how is that word going to come up if you don't sit down and allow God to put his words in your mouth? Oh, good God Almighty. If you don't sit there and allow God to put his words on the inside of you. He said, the Lord put his put his hand and touched my mouth. And he said to me, behold, I have put your word. I have put my words in your mouth and see I set you this day over nations and kingdoms to pluck up, to break down, to destroy and to overflow, um, uh, to build and to overthrow, to build and to plant. I'm telling you, what God has called us to jump into is specific, babe. It's specific, sis. God has given us specific instructions, um, and he knows exactly how he wants us to do it. I want you to break down. I want you to pluck up. I want you to destroy. I want you to overthrow some stuff. I want you to build, and I want you to plant. For those sisters who don't know your purpose, you feel like, man, what is my purpose? What am I called? to do what am I jumping into <laughs> what am I jumping into here it is here's the areas um, that God has called you to he's called you to pluck up 
He's called you to break down. He's called you to destroy. He's called you to overthrow. He's called you to build up and he's called you to plant, baby. Hear me and hear me clearly. I want you to holler at your sister in the chat and tell her it's time to take over, sis. It's time to take over. That's what God said and that's what we gonna do. Everywhere you go, you should take over. Take over the enemy's camp. Take over. Take over sickness. Take over doubt. Um, take over all of these things that are plaguing our world. Take over. You were called to take over. You were born to take over. When you walk in um, to a situation, um, that situation or, or the spirit that's attached to it should be trembling because it knows that when you walk in the room, takeover comes with you, baby. Takeover comes with you. And when I walk into the room, it cannot dwell here. It can't dwell here anymore. Um, sickness can't dwell here. Doubt can't dwell here. It can't dwell here anymore when I come into the room because I was anointed to take over. Oh, good God Almighty. Good God Almighty. And so that's that's the precision with which God uh, wants to uh, process his daughters. I want to process you with such precision um, that every single piece of you, the way you talk, the way you walk, the way you think, think the way you write process vision um the way the way you um uh, lead your family um the way you educate your children um the way you work in your career i want all of that all of that the way you do it is needed and is necessary and it's something that i divinely designed for you to do so stop trying to change yourself god has divinely designed for you to do it the way you do it.